It's a really big day today. Um, I've been waiting about three months, two months now for um, my French Bulldog puppy. So today he finally gets here um, around lunchtime. So that means we had to get up early. Um, I have to do my check-in photos for my coach because I'm about three weeks out from my first NPC figure show. Um, so I'm gonna wake up and um, get my posing done, get my check-in going, and uh, get a workout in. Why the fuck are you getting a puppy when you are three weeks out from your show? I think that's a very valid question. I have asked myself the same thing a few times. Firstly, this was not an impulse decision. I decided to uh, bring home a puppy back in January or February when I was going through um, a time. And I decided that, you know, I wanted to invest my love and nurturing into something that would reciprocate and always be there and you know I think I was ready for that kind of responsibility in my life. Um, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at financially. This is definitely not something that I would recommend somebody to do if they didn't feel like they could um, support themselves first and foremost and that's why it's taken me so long. I actually was looking into um, the French Bulldog breed back in 2016 um, like really very seriously starting to have the conversation and I just realized that at that point in my life I wasn't yet very um, established in my career I wasn't you know god that was so long ago I just wasn't in the right mindset I think also given you know the pandemic and the fact that I work 100% remote um, I can always be here of all of the distractions that I've ever had in previous preps um, this kind of distraction feels less stressful to me. I know that sleep is extremely important. I've been sleeping extra, I feel like, the past couple of months trying to get get ready for this day. And I just, you just take deep breaths and you take it day by day and you take it step by step, right? And of all of the things I think that could be kind of distracting and, and bothering me right now, um, this feels like it's something that I can take on. Uh, so. I'm gonna have help today. My amazing friend Chelsea Jang is uh, back in action for another episode with me on my vlog here. Um, she's gonna show up in a few hours and we are gonna drive into Logan Airport where we meet up with baby Bjorn and bring him home. Very much looking forward to it. Um, I also had a really good check-in um, with my coach this morning. I'm down to 142.8 pounds. Um, when I first started prep back in whatever December-ish, I was about 165, 168, so we're down, um, you know, quite a ways, and I still have three weeks left. So, the name of the game over the next three weeks with this brand new puppy in here is just patience, regiment, and um, compassion. <laughs> and uh, you know, we're we're gonna see how it goes. 
Um, I'm excited to include you in this. <laughs> so we'll make some food and then um, it's time to go get him. Look who's wow. here. It's my girl Chelsea. So we have T minus 45 minutes until Bjorn gets here. And so I have to eat a meal real quick and then we'll jump in the car and drive to the airport and go meet my boy. <laughs> okay, do I want potatoes or do I want rice? Potatoes. Well, I'm not gonna, I already worked out this morning. So usually like potatoes sit a little bit heavier in my stomach. So if I was about to work out, I'd probably choose the rice. But since there's no workout for the rest of the afternoon, um, I can just I actually prefer the taste of the potatoes a little more. So, I don't know. so did you just meal prep all this? Like, yeah. So I mean, I used to like meal prep um, for the whole week, right? Like Sunday meal prep, all those Tupperwares. But now that um, we're in the pandemic and we're like in quarantine, I can just pretty much cook fresh food. So, um, I kind of prefer doing that. I also don't have a microwave, so... You're right! Yeah, yeah. so um, every time I have to heat up food, I have to cook it anyway, so... So it's turkey? Yes, a little bit of turkey, um, a cup of broccoli, and... Um, Those potatoes. And some little potatoes. Ooh, food scale, very important. It's one of the ones that, um, it's like the touch screen buttons. Yeah. I like have a love-hate relationship with those ones because eventually they just stop responding to your touch. I know. I like the ones that are like, you know, with a tactic. So half of this looks like a different color because... Yeah, I was I, just wondering <laughs> that. Because I put Flavor God seasoning, um, the on pizza half. seasoning, in, yeah, on half of them and then I combined the two, but um, yeah. It's pretty dope and I'm going to add more because it's really good. <laughs> A little bit of this guy goes a long way. Um, all right, and let's so. be realistic, heating your food up on the stove is way tastier than in the microwave. Yeah. Way tastier. Seriously, I'm almost like a, a microwave snob now. Like I'm like, oh, I guess I'll do it. It just doesn't, doesn't quite taste the same. It tastes... It's different. Radiated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, a microwave fanatic, I do have to say, because I'm a lazy girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the sheer convenience of it, uh, it definitely, I do miss that. And I think in the hotel in Pittsburgh, there's going to be a microwave and a fridge, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy that, I think Gary Udit is the um, show promoter and like every one of Gary's shows are like known to go very well and very smooth. So of course he made sure that we were going to have microwaves and fridges, um, which is really huge stress off because who wants to like, when you're just about to go onto your show or whatever, like who wants to go all the way upstairs to a different level to use one microwave that the whole floor is using or whatever. <laughs> and like every, the entire hotel is filled with these people who want to use it, so you have to wait in line to heat everything up. Yeah, so. Pain in the butt. Yeah, so that will be microwave life, but for now, we'll just have stove life. <laughs> what time is it? 12.30, you got a jet. Okay. Maybe I'll take this on the road then? Yeah, take it on the road. Okay. Oh. Ooh, it does look really good and smells great. That's what happens when you make it on the stove and not in the microwave. <clears throat> yeah. Well, how did you decide on his name or did, was it given to him? Um, so I actually chose his name. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show Vikings. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I don't know, it just kind of came to me one day and Bjorn is the son of a very badass Viking woman named Lagasa. Bjorn actually also means bear in Norwegian and Scandinavian, I believe. So yeah, I mean, I've like, I don't know, it just kind of came to me once when I was uh, <laughs> watching the show and um, shortly after I decided to get him, so. How did you uh, pick him? Ooh, that's a really good question. So, um, I, my good friend Christine, actually um, invited me to a few private Facebook groups um, of French Bulldog breeders, and I just kind of like hung out and waited until, um, you know, I got a feel for a couple of the groups and 
kept an eye out for some of the breeders that I saw that were pretty frequent there or you know had a lot of references kind of thing and Shirley McFadden is down in uh, Missouri I believe and um, she has a really amazing little family of corgis and Frenchies. It was really important to me in the upfront to uh, hop on a video call with her. I got to see like her um, facility that she has the dogs in, Bjorn specifically. Uh, I just kind of waited until, um, you know, I gave Shirley sort of like a ballpark estimate of when I would be looking to have a puppy and I tried to think, um, you know, with my prep in mind and knowing that I have a competition coming up at the time, I thought it was going to be April 24th, which was going to be the NPCJ Color Classic. I actually had turned down a couple of the first puppies that she had brought to me because the timing was too early. I wanted to make sure that I got into a really good place with my prep um, and all of my training so that, you know, if I was going to overlap this, that I wouldn't be in the midst of it when, you know, I needed to be the most focused. She told me, hey, you know, end of April or, uh, you know, middle of April, I would have a male brindle French Bulldog available. Um, and she sent me a couple of pictures and it, that was it. If it stinks, he farted. <laughs> I was like, it's, I, I was like, it's okay if you farted. <laughs> who farted? I want to know who did farted. it. <laughs> That's one thing that they told me about this breed is that um, they fart, they fart a lot. <laughs> like he's not, they're not gonna be like loud and like super Silent like down. barking dogs, but like they snore a lot and they breathe really loud and they also fart a lot. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, he went under. Bjorn. Good boy. Good boy, do we want a treat? Dude, he's catching on to his name like really quick, I feel like. It's because you're incentivizing him with food. That's it. Putting all the uh, lessons from my possum Frenchie to good use. <laughs> Peter Cram taught me everything that I needed to know. Right? Peter Cram, my possum Frenchie. It's the hookup. Uh, well, thank you for coming with me on this journey. Um, I am unbelievably happy with my little man. I'm really excited. Um, this is kind of just the little pocket of joy I needed three weeks out from my first show to keep me <laughs> keep me laughing and keep things lighthearted. So appreciate you coming along and meeting my little boy. You want to say bye? Say bye, little baby. Say bye. Bye. Aww. He smells like a new puppy. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to provide a little update, kind of post uh, post puppy day update, and how we're doing, and how it's uh, 
how it's been adjusting to having a new puppy in the house. Definitely a challenge, <laughs> um, but also an extremely rewarding experience. Obviously we're housebreaking, so there's a lot of accidents happening inside and to be truthful with you at this point in my prep, um, patience is a little thin. <laughs> little things like puppy gnawing and not listening to your commands and stuff like that. It, it has been interesting um, at times, but then, you know, we'll go for a walk around the block and he'll walk completely by himself on the leash without me pulling or guiding. He's learned to sit, um, you know, oh, I almost put the wrong seasoning in there. I almost put the cinnamon in there. <laughs> um, that's for my oatmeal. I, I'm making oatmeal right now with cinnamon and stevia. Um, and then my eggs I make with spinach, um, a little bit of kernel seasonings, popcorn, like cheddar stuff, so that it tastes like cheese, and salt and pepper. Lots of salt on everything right now. Uh, I think we're, I've, it's been about five, no, six days since I brought Bjorn home. And um, he's already responsive to his name, he's responsive to sit, he's responsive to no, he's responsive to good boy. I think a large part of this is due to the amount of research that I did um, before I brought him home. I watched um, my Possum Frenchie's YouTube channel up and down. Peter Cram is like a Frenchie whisperer. Um, I know I mentioned him earlier in the video, but uh, he taught me a whole lot about what to expect with this breed. And then I also watched um, Canine Intervention the whole way through on Netflix. Basically, I, I knew kind of what to expect before I brought him home, and so I've just been utilizing the resources and the tips that I've learned from those people. Um, and to summarize, I guess, if you were thinking about getting a Frenchie, um, I would watch as much content as you possibly can about the breed, as much content as you can about dogs in general, because when you're in the moment, it helps to kind of know that stuff already, um, instead of going into it like completely blind. Yeah, so it's about 8.15 right now. I'm gonna finish making my, my breakfast here, and then, I log on for uh, my 9 to 5 job. Um, it's very early in the morning and today is a high carb day, my only high carb day of the week, which is really nice. Um, definitely needing uh, <laughs> definitely needing the carbs. I'm sitting at about 16 days out now from the NPC Pittsburgh show. Um, so I'm feeling pretty lean. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to uh, all of my hard work paying off in 16 days. I'm also looking forward to um, a little bit of energy and neurological function returning uh, thereafter. I'm about to burn my breakfast, so I better uh, get going and eat this. Thank you as always for tuning in, and um, I'll keep vlogging uh, throughout the process uh, leading up to my show if uh, you guys want to see it. So. Let me know in the con comments if you want me to continue vlogging um, leading up to my show, or uh, you know, hit me up on Instagram. E Musgrave is my Instagram handle. Peace.